road, yet back again, and today we're heading to the Valley, home of Charlton Athletic Football Club. But before we get going, we must pick up our guest for today. Hello, it's Charlie from Palmers FC. This one's pretty straightforward. It's right up the A13 through the Blackwall Tunnel and Wham Bam. Thank you, ma'am. And whilst we take this ever so simple trip, let me remind you that this video is sponsored by FOTMOB. If you want to get the scores pinged to your phone there and then, this is the app for you. Got in-depth stats from teams all over the world. As you can see at the top there, I've got my favourites. And for the benefit of today, I've added Charlton Athletic as one of my favourite teams alongside Spurs. I'll tell you what, that's going to look very strange if I ever go to Arsenal. Let's concentrate on today. It's Charlton Athletic versus Shrewsbury Town. Question for you though, because a lot of people say Shrewsbury, but I say Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury, Shrewsbury, tomato, tomato. We have a look at the head-to-head -head last time around. Well, they haven't played this season yet. Maybe the game got postponed early on in the season. I'm not too sure. But the last time these two played, it was a 4-3 win for Shrewsbury. Another scoreline like that would be absolutely wonderful. Delightful, in fact. Let's have a quick look at the table. Shrewsbury sit in second, one point behind Blackburn. They're currently occupying the automatic promotion spots. But Wigan, three games in hand over both of them. We'll have something to say about that. Sitting down in sixth, it's Charlton. Way away from any sort of automatic promotion. But they are well in the mix for playoffs this year. It's two of the danger men for today for Charlton. It's Josh McGuinness, top scorer. And Jake foster Kasky on the assist. We'll be looking out for the numbers nice shirt of McGuinness today. Eight goals he's got this season and the one assist. We head over to Shrewsbury. It's Stephen Payne that's got the same record as McGuinness. Eight goals and one assist. But if we go over to the man that's been behind a lot of the goals this season, six for himself, ten assists is Sean Wally. Where's Wally? He's right there. Looks like we're about to hit some traffic. Traffic. You know what Charlie's thinking? Not too sure what. Best suggestion in the comments below. Windsor Mars Bar. The Blackwall Tunnel equals traffic. But finally we're heading through and apparently there's light at the end of every tunnel except for when it's dark. What a lovely day. Don't know that for you though. It is cold. Now we're heading off to Greenwich where there's a brown sign for the O2 but not going to the O2. It's the valley. We're going to go under these bridges and search for a parking space and walk the rest of the journey. Sainsbury's, I choose you. And just like that, we're all parked up. God is actually contemplating whether to bring his coat or not. He definitely should. And now we're walking. Actually rocking a homemade knitted scarf by the mother-in-law. Nice one. Charlie, however, still not feeling the cold. And we're still walking past the Anthony Gallagher. Couple of horses as we head down Ransom Walk. On the other side, we're greeted by a man who's got match programs. Yes, please. Five pounds? What? Just got the most expensive program of the series so far. Charlie spotted a foam finger. Here's a shot to foam finger. Gladiators. If you know, you know. Charlie's now feeling the cold. The hug I gave him was temporary, so now he's going to buy a scarf for a tenner. And when asked which one he wanted, he said the red and white one. And just like that, he was given a red and white one. Consider grabbing some food from here, but then I realised the queue. It goes on a little bit, just down there. And if we say hello to Chris Powell and check our tickets to find our entrance to potentially get something to eat inside. Not a good idea, apparently. I do love a statue at a football ground. This right here is Sam Bartram. He's even got a bar and restaurant named after him. Nice touch. As we continue to look for our entrance, Charlie's asked Julie. Julie doesn't know, but she's called over Brian. Brian's going to have a look now. And guess what? Brian doesn't know either. Brian's called Jane. She's not too sure. Gary's now lurking too. Eventually, between the four of them, we get pointed in the opposite direction. And so we're walking. Where the kids are having fun with the mascots. We've got a valiant knight and a robin. I don't know what he's taken, but he's definitely buzzing for this game. Hey, it's Sasa Village and Clive Mendonca, both featured in one of my favourite games of all time, the player final against Sunderland in 98. Would you look at that? We found the entrance. So in we go. <laughs> But boop. Now we've had a right touch today. Charlie's doing football for a fiver. That's what I call a bargain. So as we head up some stairs, Charlie's excited. Or needs a wee, one of the two. Either way, off he goes to the toilet. And I've just bumped into a view of the videos. It's Ollie. Hello. Hello. Next up, we're talking food and drink. We have noticed no Dr. Pepper. Quite a few people have been telling me recently, don't mark it down for no Dr. Pepper. But to those people, I say, this is my experience of going to a football match. And if you want to do your own one and mark it highly for food and drink when it hasn't got Dr. Pepper, go for it. As you can see, I grabbed a pie and a Coke. Six pounds sixty. That's quite a lot. Charlie's not happy. His pie's broken off. Oh, no, nope, so did mine. But Charlie's not just a pretty face. He's gone and got a fault. Well done, that man. And so we're done. Done. And I mean, done. What's on the pie? Well, I'll let you know my experience after the game. So the Charlton lineup is in, and this lot over here getting in the mood. <laughs> So we're going to attempt to find our seat. Yeah, I think he's here. Here we go. Up some steps. Then up some more steps. We're in the nosebleeds today. Arrived at the nosebleeds, and this is my view. <laughs> We've even got a view behind us, but don't stand on here, please. Come on. And just to let you guys know that you ain't getting on the roof without a permit, okay? God is getting his photo for the day. And we've got a screen in the corner. Gotta love a digital screen. Much like most grounds, leg room isn't great, so hopefully the person in front won't be here. Oh, look, he's back. He's definitely on something, I'll tell you. Oh, great. The person in front is here. Looks like we'll be standing now. With just two and a half minutes till kickoff, the team's finally emerged. <laughs> Just like every week, big up the groundsman for making this surface playable. Now, if this is the team that Charlton are putting out today, I've just got a feeling Shrewsbury might just take all three points. But we'll see. Either way, this lot will be backing them, though. Red Army. And just like that, we've got a kick off. Do we get the facts? Let's name. Charlton Athletic. Founded 19 no Biscuit. What about a ground? Well, we're here. It's the Valley, which has a capacity of 27,111. Nickname, The Addicts. Anything else? Well, I totally forgot Paolo De Canio once played for Charlton. Jonathan Johansson was always in my dream team. And finally, once upon a time, Matt Holland was in all sports doing a meet and greet, so I got his autograph. I thought there'd be a Charlton fan out there that would appreciate it, then I realised I didn't know any Charlton fans. And I still don't. But there are some. Let this lot, for example. I'll tell you what, that is a very helpful digital scoreboard. Charlton early chance. <laughs> what about another couple of chances? <laughs> Let's 
have a look around here. Down the end, we've got the Jimmy Seed stand, which occupies the away fans for today. Over there, we've got the East stand with the suns in their eyes. On the opposite side, of course, it's the West stand with the subs benches. It's much higher than the other two as well. That then carries around to the North stand where we're at today. It's where the majority of the noise is coming from, and the average age is just an observation. I think it's about 16 years old. Time for pressing matters, of course, it's Justin for Shoes. It's definitely a thing at the valley. Over that side, it certainly is. Look at him getting an eyeful. Meanwhile, Shrewsby goal kick. <laughs> Now I'm caught off guard as Shrewsbury in a penalty. Oh, yeah. So here we go. Chance for Nolan to put the Blues 1-0 up. Yeah. I've now adopted the I'm getting comfortable stance. And justice for sure is that the away end is definitely not a thing. And can we just take a moment for Brian and Gary? They didn't even get let in the stadium. Coming up to the 30 minute mark. Charlie's having a whiz through Fop Mob to see the latest scores. Now I've just realised this linesman isn't related to the other linesmen in other games. We normally refer to them as the human rulers, but this one is lacking that. Perhaps he's just a normal guy like me and you, you know, but he's definitely not related to the human rulers, that's for sure. My man down the end has adopted the comfortable seating position as well. I've got to tell you, it's actually very relaxing. There's Terry having a word with Gary, trying to convince him that down there there's a way into the ground. Meanwhile, here's a load of Shrewsbury fans who'd rather stand outside. Meanwhile, inside, I spotted a happy face. Time for this dot to beat the rush for a couple of cokes. Sun's out, guns out. And just time for one final chance for Charlton. <laughs> And just like that, that's half time. It was a great start to the game. Charlton came out the stronger, should have had one at least. Then they conceded the penalty and saved it. And following that, the game's pretty poor to be honest. And despite it being half time, these guys are just not getting a break. Justice for Stewards. Mascots are back out, but seriously, what's that robbing taking, please? Quick look at the league table. Both teams are dropped down by one, but a win for either side will see them pop back to where they were before. Charlie just checking the West Ham score. Did you know West Ham were unbeaten in their last three away games against Liverpool? Well, that's gone now. They got hammered. Here's another view of the on the road series. It's Zach. <laughs> Hello. Not that we could hear him. Did I hear this right? Hit the crossbar and win 500 quid. <laughs> Unlucky son, then I need to go down. We've had our pie. Got me coke still. Not long after, Shrewsbury are out for the second half. Charlton soon follow. Let's do this. Red Army. It's got to be said, this song went on for a while. Yep, yeah, still going, and I'll be honest, it's sending me into a trance. So much so that I just missed a goal. For who? On him Shrewsbury, Robin with the goal. Following that, they're going for a second. Frustration setting in amongst the fans. The flag's still flying high though at the valley. And at 1-0, there's always a chance. Although it is possible in football for things to get worse. So they're happy. They're also happy. Especially Beckles who grabbed the goal. And look who's got the assist. It's Wally. Not good for Charles now, ever. Here we go again. That's hard to hear that lot from down here, but they're singing. <laughs> I've actually just learned something new. Frankie Fryer is a Shrewsbury fan. Moving on, I get the feeling Charlton have just given up. They can't even track a man. I told you! Luckily for them, Nolan blasted it over. Some fans have had enough. They're leaving early. So are this lot too. They're only going to miss the handbags, aren't they? As the sun sets on the valley, this lot certainly ain't leaving early. It's the Charlton fans that have stayed have got to suffer another four minutes. This volley that goes worldwide sums up Charlton's second half. Following that, more people have had enough. As for me, I'm just chilling. Bring on the booze. <laughs> So Shrewsbury will pick up all three points away from home. Clean sheet as well. They'll be happy. As for Charlton, bad that the office wasn't it. If they'd have scored in the early minutes, it might have been a much different game, but it wasn't to be. And they come away with nothing. So as we jump on the back of the line to get out of here, let's rate this experience. First up, we've got atmosphere. They were pumped for this one. Ready to roll. I'm sure someone said to me somewhere that it would be a sellout due to the reduced ticket price. It wasn't to be. There was plenty of noise in our end. After a while, it did get a bit repetitive, let's say. Once Shrewsbury got their second, it all kind of died off, didn't it? But this one, I'm gonna give it three and a half stars. Next up, we've got facilities. It's a nice little ground to be fair. I can't imagine there's many bad views in this place, which of course is one of the bigger grounds in League One. I liked it, and for that reason, I'm going to go three and a half stars again. Did somebody say food and drink? I said food and drink. Let's talk about the food and drink. Well, the burgers on the outside look nice, but I couldn't be bothered to queue. I did have a few warnings to say don't eat inside, but hey, look, I'm here to put my life on the line for football. There was probably more choice around the ground, but we could only find the pie and mash section. Got the pie. It fell apart, but how did it taste? It was all right. We'll go three stars, but knock it down a little just for the lack of Dr. Pepper. Remember, guys, don't get upset. It's just my preference. Which gives Charlton a total of two and a half stars. Finally, we're talking cost. You cannot beat a five pound ticket. It's as simple as that. The cheapest ticket we've had in the on the road series so far but to go from that to the most expensive program we've bought in the series so far it was interesting food and drink i thought was quite expensive as well fantastic chance to grab five stars i've knocked it down to four still a decent score though as we take one last look at the valley it's time to get out of here so it's down these steps which are annoyingly large and outside to the stadium q random shrewsbury fan and it's a case of ever so briefly taking off road to get to the car found the car and off we go traffic and more traffic whilst we wait let's just check fop mob you can grab this app links are in the description below available on iphone and android and as you can see from the table 
table. Carlton are now outside of the playoffs, but they do have games in hand over those around them, so hopefully, come the end of the season, they'll be in the mix. Eventually, we get going and we say hello to the O2 and take the short trip back to Essex. We'll be back on the road very soon. Don't forget to let me know in the comments below where you want me to go. Be sure to check out the On The Road playlist in case you missed any of the games I've been to. But finally, do us a favour, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and we will see you in the next one.